Hello. Uh, thank you for joining me for the um, Natural Lawn Care webinar that I'm giving today. My name is Paul Sanford, and I am a um, natural gardening educator with Metro Regional Government. And if you're not familiar with Metro, Metro is actually a quite a unique agency. And so Metro covers um, the Portland metropolitan area of Multnomah, Washington, and Clackamas County. And Metro actually wears quite a few different hats. So um, Metro has venues that, that they operate, and that includes like the Ex Expo Center, the Convention Center, the Portland Five um, art venues. Um, Metro also um, is, has conservation that is a major part of our focus. So with the Oregon Zoo, with our parks, with our green spaces, that we try to protect. We also are, are a big planner for the transportation for the region um, and also development for the region. The department that I work in focuses on the garbage and, and waste for the region. And so um, some of the things that, that we focus on is recycling, what's recyclable, what things can be thrown away in the garbage, and there's some things that are just um, too toxic and too um, hazardous for the environment to actually throw away. We consider those hazardous waste. And so we have two separate hazardous waste facilities where we, we collect hazardous waste. One is in Northwest Portland and one is in Oregon City. And some of the things that we collect there are um, cleaning products, fluorescent light bulbs, batteries, flammable things. Um, but one of the big things is actually gardening chemicals like pesticides. So today I'm going to be talking about how do you maintain your lawn naturally? Some of these chemicals that um, are used in lawns like weed and feed, um, are actually very harmful and, and very toxic. And that's one of the reasons why um, we want people, instead of throwing them in the garbage, to be taking them to a has waste facility if you're gonna be um, disposing of them. But we also wanna teach people, um, what can you do at home um, to have like a really great looking yard, a great looking lawn uh, without using these chemicals. And so those are some of the things that I'm gonna be talking about today. So first, why, why choose the, to have a lawn that's naturally? Like I mentioned before, these chemicals are really toxic. Weed and feed is actually made up of, of multiple products, and um, one of them is weed killers, but it's also made up of fertilizer, so it's kind of a, a dual purpose product. Um, if, if you follow all the instructions on the bag, making sure that you're wearing protective um, gloves and a face mask and that you're staying off the, the lawn um, from 24 to 48 hours, even after that period of time, there's still um, a risk in, of exposure. Weed and feed actually has a half-life of three to four weeks. So even after a month that after you put it on, it's still in um, high concentrations. Another reason um, why not to use pesticides is it can actually harm the microbial balance in the soil. So all those beneficial bacteria that are gonna be helping to break down nutrients, um, decomposing, uh, they also help um, to, to fight disease that can get in the soil. Um, so if you're using those chemicals, it actually can harm the, the bacteria. So you're losing that, um, like that protection, and, and you end up having to use even more chemicals to, to help um, fight disease or, or even to, to add more nutrients to the soil. And also one of the reasons is that we get a lot of rain here in the Pacific Northwest, and once you put the chemicals on your, your yard, they don't always stay there. And so after a good rain, they may be washed into the um, the drain pipe or they get flushed through to the, the soil table, the water table. And we actually 
um, the local jurisdictions like the Portland Water Bureau and many of the local governments actually test the water. And, and pesticides and fertilizers are, are things that are commonly found in it. So we wanna make sure that we're not getting those in there. So how do you prevent these problems? And one of the first things you can do is to observe. You wanna to try to catch these problems early before they become problems. So if you start to see a few weeds pop up in your yard, make sure that you get those right away so that they don't seed and, and cause even more problems. The other thing is you wanna figure out what is causing the problem. So if you're starting to get moss in your yard, why is the moss getting in your yard? Are there things that you need to change that um, will prevent that in the future instead of just using a, a moss killer that's might kill the wasps now, but if you don't fix the problems, the moss is just going to come right back. And once you figure out what those problems are, make sure that you fix it so that it doesn't become a problem in the future. If you do find a problem, try to use the least toxic method. So instead of um, getting a, a spray bottle with um, a weed killer, just go ahead and pull up the weed. So really, the, the biggest thing you can do with a lawn is just maintain it properly. That's going to really um, help prevent a lot of problems from actually happening. And when you think of maintenance, usually the first thing you think of is mowing. There's quite a few different types of lawn mowers. This is an example of a cylinder or a real mower. And one of the things with this mower is it has multiple blades, as you can see. So it acts like scissors when it's, it's cutting the grass. One of the benefits of this type of mower is that it can actually cut really fine and really short. So um, if you look at a putting green that's cut really, really short, they're actually gonna use this type of mower. One of the downsides is that they don't really cut longer grass. So depending on the grass species and depending on um, like the look of the lawn that you want, this may not be a, a suitable mower for you. And they also really work best just on flat surfaces. This is the most common mower. It's the rotary mower. The, the blade looks a lot like um, a, an airplane propeller. And one of the benefits of this mower is it's very versatile. So it's very easy to lower and raise the height. You can mow different types of grass surfaces, um, even on hills. And there's quite a few different types of, of rotary mowers. So this is one example here. Um, this is a, a corded electric mower, but there's also um, gas mowers, there's riding lawn mowers that are rotary. So there's quite a few different kinds. And this particular one here is actually the one that I prefer because um, with the, I have a little bit smaller lawn and um, the, the corded ones are actually quite uh, quiet. They're not too loud, which is great. And then I don't have the, the fumes from, from the gas ones, but there's quite a few different choices. The third main type of mower is a hover mower. With the hover mower, it actually, um, the, the blade moving around acts like a kind of an air pocket and it lifts it up. So it, it hovers over the surface. They're pretty lightweight. They work really well on slopes or, or really odd shapes and they can actually go side to side and in any type of direction you want. Um, one of the downsides with these type of mowers is they don't, they're really hard to, to adjust and not all of them do adjust. They also are a little bit harder to, to get a really good control on. So if you are at the very edge of a bed, um, really close to like your plants, it's, it's possible you might actually hit some of those. So this doesn't work in all yards, and, and usually that's why people use the, the rotary lawnmowers. 
this mower um, doesn't have wheels, but the other two do have wheels. And one thing I, I want to mention about that is that a lot of times when you see um, lawns, you'll see people do really cool patterns sometimes. If you are going over the same like lines every single time that you mow, um, right where those wheels are, it's going to cause compaction. So you want to make sure that if you do like a, a pattern this way one day, that um, the next time you mow, that you'll go in a different direction. One really important thing with a lawnmower is that you want to make sure that you're keeping that blade really sharp and really clean. If you've ever used a, a dull pair of scissors to cut something or like a really dull knife in the kitchen, you find that what it does is it actually tears and it causes jagged edges. And that's what happens with a, the, the grass blades when you cut it, it using a, a dull mower. Um, and, and that makes it harder for the grass to actually repair itself and it takes longer and during that time, it's susceptible to disease and it can actually weaken it. So just having a really sharp mower um, can go a long way to having a, a really healthy lawn. Another really important thing about mowing is that you want to make sure you're only taking a third off of the leaf blade at a time. There's quite a few different um, species of, of grass and different species will prefer to be mowed at different heights. But usually, unless you have a brand new lawn, you're gonna have a mix of different grass species. So um, kind of on average, I would say, mow it between two to three inches, kind of keep that base. So if you wanted to keep it at two inches, every time it gets to three inches, you know that's when it's time to cut it again. Also, the longer that you have like the, the grass blade, the deeper the roots are going to go. And so if you keep it on the slightly long side, that means that your roots are going to be deeper and have, um, it's, they're going to be more drought tolerant. And so it's, it's going to actually be a little bit healthier. And they also help to, to shade out some of the weeds that come in. You can see uh, with the rotary lawnmowers, they're very easy to adjust the height on. The frequency is going to change of, um, during the season. So you can see from this, this graph that during the winter time, grass grows very slowly. During the springtime, there's a lot of moisture. It's starting to heat up. And so it actually grows really quickly. So you're going to have to mow a lot more frequently then. Typically during the summer, if you don't do any watering, they're naturally going to go dormant. Um, but if you do water, that means you're just going to have to mow a little bit more. And in the fall, you're getting moisture again. The soil's really warm. And uh, it's, you're going to have to start mowing a little bit more frequently. On, on average, usually it's going to be weekly during the, the growing season, during the spring and fall. Um, and then also during the, the winter time, it might only be once a month. But again, follow that, um, that one-third rule that you don't want to, to let it go too long that you're cutting more than a, a third off each time. Mulching mowers are great because they leave the glass clippings on the lawn, which are going to be adding nutrients to the soil. Um, you can see from this graph with watering or this, this illustration that if, if you water frequently, but really um, like not very deep, the roots aren't going to go very deep. So you want to water more infrequently, but water really deep so that there's going to be moisture there for the, the roots to chase. Typically during the summertime, it's about an inch per week. If you have an irrigation system, you can actually calibrate it by using um, either a rain gauge or a tuna can. Just turn the system on and then time how long it takes um, for that can to reach an inch. And that's how long you know that, that you need to set your watering for. You can also add a rain sensor to your system. And that's also going to help save money because, you know, you don't want to be watering your lawn if it's raining outside. So it actually detects when there's moisture, when there's rain, 
and then it, it doesn't kick the system on. Fertilizing is really important for a lawn because lawns need lots of nutrients. And one of the ways that, the best ways that you can fertilize, it's just leaving your grass clippings on the lawn. It's gonna be free fertilizer, great nitrogen. It breaks down really quickly, so you don't have to worry about thatch building up, and I'll talk about thatch a little bit more later. Um, another thing you can do is, if you are gonna be overseeding, you can add some compost and just kind of a thin layer and rake it in, and that's gonna add nutrients. And then it's also good to, to add a natural or a slow release fertilizer. And the difference between those types of fertilizers is that they're gonna release the, the fertilizer slowly over time. Um, some of the synthetic fertilizers that are higher in nitrogen, they put all the nitrogen down at one time and so it's really hard for the grass to absorb it quick enough, and most of the time it actually doesn't, and it gets flushed through during a rain and ends up in our water. So, I mean, if you can imagine, you have a, a big bag of candy, and you just eat all the candy at once, you get kind of this sugar high, and you don't feel great, and then it's, it's kind of wasted. But if you just eat it slowly, one at a time, um, then it's, it's much better. And so it's actually a lot healthier for the lawn to get it slowly over time. Frequency is gonna vary depending on the type of grass you have. Um, in this area, some of the more common grasses are perennial rye grass and, and fescues. Perennial rye needs a, a little bit more nutrients, so you can do it twice a year. Petskies you really only need to do once a year. And some of the best times are gonna be either mid-May or in the fall of mid-September to mid-October. And so how much nitrogen, how much fertilizer should you actually put on? And the recommendations is one to two pounds of nitrogen for 100, 1,000 square feet. So if you have a 100 by 10 foot lawn, that's 1,000 square feet. And the way to calculate it is, um, when you look at your, your bag of fertilizer, you'll see three numbers on it. The first number is gonna be the percentage of nitrogen in the bag. The second is the percentage of phosphorus. And then the third is the percentage of potassium. So to calculate it, let's say it's five, 10, five, which is 5% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, 5% potassium. So you take that 5% and divide it by 100, and then you multiply it by how much the bag weighs. And that's gonna give you the amount of pounds of nitrogen that's in that bag. So you can figure out how much of that bag to use. Uh, fertilizing in spring really helps with leaf growth and fertilizing in fall really helps with, with root growth. So sometimes it's better to actually fertilize. If you're just gonna do it once a year, do it in the fall, because that really helps. Um, build up the, the roots, which is gonna help maintain the plant, keep it healthy. This is a really great tool that, that you can have at home. It's called a, a, a thatching rake. You can see it has these kind of jagged kind of teeth-like things on it. And what it does is when you're, you're using it, it's breaking apart thatch. And if you look in the this illustration below, you can see that thatch is actually a buildup of roots and, and different organic matter over time, which that prevents nutrients and water and other things from, from getting to the, the roots of the plants, which can kind of stunt the root growth. So taking the rake and just running it through the grass kind of breaks that up. You can also use um, an aerator, which kind of pulls out cores um, from the, the lawn also, which, which has, allows you to get that moisture and those nutrients to it. And thatching rakes also help to, to rake up moss or other things that you have in it without pulling up the, the grass itself. A lot of times I'll get questions from people. They'll be telling me, um, 
about their lawn problems that they're having. That, for example, they might say that I've noticed that I have a lot of bare spots in my lawn or I keep getting weeds in my lawn in different places. And one of the first things I ask them is, have you, have you overseeded your lawn recently? And usually the answer I get is, I've never overseeded my lawn. And one of the things about overseeding, um, or ag actually about lawns themselves, about grass, is they're, it's a perennial. It's a, it, you know, it's a plant that does have a lifespan, even though it's multiple years. In the wild, if you just let the grass grow, it would actually be seeding and it would be dropping more seeds to keep itself really lush. But because we're mowing it all the time, we're, we're not letting it go to seed. And so over time, it just starts to die out. And in those places where it's dying out, you're gonna start getting bare spots and you're gonna start getting weeds. And so if, if you overseed your lawn once a year, that's gonna make a huge difference in making sure that you're having that really thick, lush grass. And so what you can do is you can take your thatching rake and go through it first and just kind of get out any moss or anything else that's in there. Use your hand weeding tool and get up those, any weeds that you might see. And then take some compost and just sprinkle it in those areas. You can take a, a leaf rake and just kind of rake it in. After that, you'll, you'll get some um, grass seed and you can purchase grass seed online. That's right now actually the best thing to do is just to get it online. They have these seed spreaders like in the picture, but you can just use your hands too and just sprinkle it into those spots. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention first, um, after you put the first layer of compost down, make sure you water it really good and make sure that you uh, mow the lawn before you do this too, so that there's um, plenty of area to, to get the compost in. So you mow it, you put the, um, sprinkle the compost down, kind of rake it in, you sprinkle the grass seed over top. Then what you'll do is you'll add another thin layer of compost over top of the seeds, and then you'll water it really good. And for the next month, you'll want to make sure that you're, you're watering it lightly. And you want to make sure that in the areas that you've um, seeded recently that you're not mowing. Um, you can see in the, the picture below, that's, that's my own lawn. I am adding a little area, so I was adding new grass seed. Um, and so right now is a really good time to actually overseed and fall is actually a really good time to, to overseed. You don't want to do it during the summer because it's too hot and you don't want to do it in the winter too because it's, it's not going to be growing. There's quite a few different grass varieties but the most common ones for our area, and these are called um, cool season grasses, um, Kind of the main ones are going to be perennial ryegrass. You're going to have different type of fescues, and then there's also going to be bent grasses. Perennial ryegrass, those are going to be the ones if you like, if you find a, a seed mix that says that it likes um, for a really sunny area, it's usually going to be perennial ryegrass because because they like sun. They tend to need more nutrients and water than some of the other grasses but they're very tough. They can handle a lot of foot traffic. They also will go dormant in the summer unless you keep watering it. Um, fescues, you can usually tell the, the blades look finer than the, um, than the perennial ryegrass. They're a lot more shade tolerant, especially the fine fescue. That's the most shade tolerant. If you buy a seed mix that says it's for shade, it's usually going to be fescues. They can be mowed really low. Um, one of the problems is they tend to get thatched a little bit more, but you can use your thatch rake to break that up. And they don't like quite as much foot traffic as, as the other ones. Tall fescues, um, 
are also tend to be pretty shade tolerant. They're also heat and cold and drought tolerant and fairly disease resistant. So that's another great variety. Bent grasses are, if, if you've ever been to a putting green here in the Northwest, usually it's gonna be, um, have bent grasses because they can be cut really low to the ground. They can handle a lot of foot traffic. They're very drought tolerant. They don't need many nutrients. Um, Thatch does tend to build up quicker in those, but you can, can rake those out. And um, bent grass is also considered a climax, climax grass species. So over time, um, if you have a lawn here in the Northwest and when you first put it in, it's just all perennial ryegrass. Over time, there's gonna be other different grass seeds that mix in and and you're going to notice that you're getting bent grass in. You might notice some fescues. And over time, your lawn is actually going to be a mix of quite a few different grass species and other types of plants. And bent grass is the one that um, over time will actually, if you're not kind of overseeding with the perennial rye grass, will eventually kind of be the dominant grass species. If you do get, um, weeds in your lawn, the best and easiest way is just to remove it by hand. But once you remove it, you want to make sure that you're filling that blank spot with some grass seeds and some soil so that weeds aren't just popping right back into that place. Also, if you're mowing frequently, that's going to be cutting the seed head so that it's not spreading. And if you leave your grass a little bit taller, like I mentioned earlier, that's going to help crowd out any weeds that you might have. Um, there's multiple causes of moss. The first cause that I want to mention is shade. So if you have a shady area, um, most likely you're gonna start getting moss in those areas. And so what you can do is you can actually thin out some of the trees, so selectively cut some of the branches so more light gets in. You could also remove the lawn in that spot. Um, and add maybe some locally native plants that grow well in the shade. Or you can also use some of those shade tolerant grass mixes like the fine fescues. If you have poor drainage, that's gonna be another reason why you're getting moss because moss loves water. And so what you'll need to do is you'll either, again, remove the lawn in that area or add some drainage pipe to divert that water away from the area. Diseases don't happen that much here in the Northwest, but they can happen. And really the, the best way to prevent diseases is just maintaining the, the lawn properly. Having a sharp mower blade, don't over fertilize because that can, can harm um, the grass. You can use compost tea and compost tea is actually, it, it's kind of like brewing compost where you're, you're soaking the compost in, in liquid, you're adding, you can like bubble in um, air into it and you'll add some type of sugar source. So I've used molasses before. Um, and you, you let that go for like 24 hours and the bacteria, the really beneficial bacteria, they'll multiply like crazy. And then you have this, this really great liquidy water that has a lot of beneficial bacteria. And when you like sprinkle that on, spray that onto the, the leaf surface, it actually protects and coats the leaf surface. Um, one of the things with compost tea is you have to use it really like within 24 hours because um, UV ray from the sun and things like that will actually start to kill off the battery again, the bacteria. And like I mentioned, just follow proper maintenance practices. Insect damage doesn't happen that frequently here either, but the one that does happen is usually crane fly larva. Um, one of the things you could do is just reducing the amount of fall watering you're doing. And I know that can be difficult because we get a lot of rain. So usually on um, years where it's very wet during the fall and the winter is when those are the, the biggest outbreaks of, of the crane fly larva. Usually on drier, 
drier fall and winter is then not really a problem at all. But if you're um, really encouraging vigorous growth with your lawn, just maintaining it properly, it's something that you don't really even notice at all because the, um, the grass is so vigorous that, that it's able to kind of take that damage that the, the larvae are doing. Because what they're actually doing is they're chewing and feeding on the, the, the roots of the, the grass. And when you do see damage from them, you can just reseed those areas. So it's, it's not something that's, that's that um, difficult to fix. Um, you can also, online, you can get beneficial nematodes and you can spread those out over the lawn and that really helps um, fight it too. So the three main key takeaways um, that I just want to emphasize one more time is you can prevent pretty much any problems that you have with your lawn just with proper maintenance. It's really important to diagnose um, any issues that you have early so that they don't become big problems and make sure that you're using natural and physical methods before turning to chemicals. Uh, if you have, have want any more resources, you can go to our website at oregonmetro.gov uh, backslash garden. We have a section on lawn care, so there's a lot of great info in there. Um, most of the things that I talked about, you'll be able to find in there. You can also call our number at 503-234-3000, and one of our uh, recycling information specialists will be able to answer your question. And you can also just email us at askmetro at oregonmetro.gov. And thank you for coming to this webinar.